anecdote about this which perhaps presented it or, or, or de de describes it. It was two stone cutters who were sitting cutting bricks out of big s blocks of stones. And one of them looked quite uh, sad and angry. An old man, man went up to him and said, Young man, what are you doing? He said. And he said, I'm cutting this damn block of stone into small bricks, he said. And you know, if you have cut some thousands of bricks out of blocks of stone, you aren't that happy anymore. On the other, side, on the other hand, yeah, there was a guy sitting next to him and he looked quite happy. So the old man said, what are you doing then? He said, oh, he said, you see, I'm part of a team, he said. And we are all together building a beautiful cathedral, he said. Same block of stone, same bricks, but he knew where they fitted in. And he felt that his mission was as important as any of the others who built, was building this cathedral. And that's the difference between being, having momentum, being involved, feel that you are needed, compared with the old traditional management where you gave, the, gave them piecemeal orders where nothing fitted into anything and they felt that they were alone in their mission. It's, it's about making the work meaningful. Absolutely. And there's a purpose for it, yeah. as you say. Every, every person must feel that they are not only needed, but they are, that they are important and that they are necessary to build this, this beautiful uh, building that the, that the architect, the visionary leader, want them to do. Quote a survey on, on, on leadership yeah. and all the management skills that are involved in that. Yeah. And survey after survey says that communication, yeah. communication skills, has been the reason for success of many leaders, and it also conversely has been the reason for lack of success. Yeah. That is the lack of communication. Yeah, exactly. But you know, this this is. Um, I talk a lot about the old management style, compared with the new kind of strategic leadership. Uh, an old traditional manager, he wanted to tell everything himself. He wanted to dictate everything down to every single event or happening or, or mission by pointing out with full hand, giving instructions, giving orders. For him or her, um, uh, information was, uh, was um, uh, prestigeful and it was, gave them power. If they gave away information, they lost power, right? Uh, and that's the most stupid way of thinking that I could think of. Because the only way to create, to get power, is not to have a title, is not to have information, is to achieve results. If I, as a, as a leader, can stand up and say, I was running this company during the most profitable and the highest quality years of this organization, that is power. Not that I had some certain information or, or that I, I was giving, uh, was in control of every detail. No, on the, on the contrary. I mean, to give away, if that, if give, to give information and to give away responsibility and to achieve result, that's the only thing that can give you power in the end, right? There is one, um, there is one f philosopher, uh, Erich Fromm, German philosopher Erich Fromm. I, I, I gave his, um, also his con condensated philosophies. Mm -hmm. Condensed. Uh, condensed uh, okay. There is one philosopher, Erich Fromm, the German philosopher, who uh, has a condensed book about his philosophies, which I gave away to my management group a couple of times. Mm. What he, what he can, what he teach you about is that he says it's not a question of having or owning something it's a question of being to to be an owner of a sailing boat has no value to be on the sea could have a value and if, if you really love to be on the sea then it has a value and then you could even give a value to the to the boat, because that's the thing that brings you to, to, to the sea. Uh, to be a manager, or even to be a president of a big organization, has no value. But if you can 
by having that title or that position, if you can, if you can, if you can perform in a way that make people respect you, because the way you you relate to them and treat them and, and manage them, then the presidency has a value. Can you see my, my point? Very much. Yeah. Yes. yes. So uh, there were, I had been in CS for one year, and I, I thought we had we had performed mir miracle, miracles. I had been the president of SAS for one year, and I actually think we had. We thought we had. We had. We had made uh, wonders. Uh, all the people in the organization, and then there was a woman who came up to me and said, "I want to congratulate you." She said, "I was very happy because I, now I think she would say because of what you did," and said, "And she said, I want to congratulate you to the to the to the, to the, to the prestigeful position that you got." I said, don't congratulate me to that. Congratulate me if you think I did something out of it. But the position as such has no value before you make something out of it. It's, um, it's quite simple if you think it over. I, uh, I used to say that what could not be communicated does not exist. What could be communicated exists. Uh, I'll give you one very good example. Uh, at a time, the domestic airline in Sweden had a special prize for youth during a summer period. This prize was named U50. U50. Mm -hmm. It meant that if you were, were a certain age, a student, you could fly you 50 50% 50 rebate on the the, the normal price mm -hmm. uh, of, of, of an airlift right or a transport mm -hmm. Your, at that time the normal price was an average 250 kroner uh, means 50% was 125 something bucks 125 bucks the year after I had become new president of this island, I didn't understand this U50. So I have to ask him, what is it? And if I have to ask it, I'm sure that nobody in the market would understand it either, right? And as everybody knew, if, even if they understood it, they would know that it was 50% of something that they thought was very expensive. So it was not the real offer. So I said, let's introduce something that is called the 100, 100 Bucks offer as a hundred note offer, right? And then we went out telling people about the hundred note offer. The conditions was exactly the same, so the only thing we did was to lower the price by 25 bucks. Mathematically, mathematically, that should have increased the number of, of passengers from 3,500 to 5,000. Mathematically, this was, this was the calculation. It so happened that we got 125,000 passengers. So I had to ask my analysts, where the hell did you get the 121,500 21, uh, other uh, people from? Mm. And I knew the answer. <laughs> but because a 100 bucks note, or a 100 note offer, everybody can understand. So if you communicate something that somebody understands, there is an offer. But if you say U50 and nobody even understands what's behind it, there is no offer. And what could, how could you buy something that's not an offer? In other words, yeah. you must communicate to people not, not based on your own will and knowledge, but be on, always based on what is their perception and their knowledge. And you must adjust your communication to their understanding. That's mm. McLuhan, the media is the message. Mm. I mean, that's what it's all about.